mesmerized by Jake Adams' Weeping Willow Leather. Now he's done several videos on this, but uh, the one that he recently posted, I think had a lot of people wondering, well, where can you get a Weeping Willow Leather? I don't know if Jake realizes this, but whenever he put that video out, it sparked a lot of interest among reefers and trying to find one. Now trying to find a real one is difficult. Like Jake says in his video, there are a lot of people that toss the name around. I've seen a Weeping Willow Toadstool or Weeping Willow Leather on a lot of popular online coral retailers, but they just aren't. And as I continued my search, one of the local fish stores here in St. Louis had posted this video. This piece was the closest I had ever seen. So I made a deal, I went over that night and I picked it up. I got lucky. This is a large mother colony, a very large, nice showpiece. In the weeks following my purchase, I tried reaching out to Jake via Instagram, but didn't really have much luck. Although this gentleman was pretty passionate. He says the polyps need to be twice the length. In this video, I'd like to test against the characteristics that Jake Adams lays out in his Weeping Willow Leather blog, as well as the videos that he's made. And we'll test against this guy that I've got in the tank right now. When the flow is turned off, the polyps fold over, looking like a Weeping Willow tree. The suppleness of the polyp stalks. Unusually long and graceful polyps, which can extend up to four inches long, pinkish brown in color, and the polyps are typical toadstool size. I don't know any scientific way to really test right now the suppleness of the polyps, but I would say they're they're pretty supple. It literally looks like a bunch of spaghetti just flying around in the tank right now. So we'll check that off. The unusually long and graceful polyps are definitely there, but are they four inches long? All right, here's how we're gonna measure the polyp stocks. I didn't wanna stick a tape measure in the tank, so I just put some orange fluorescent uh, Sharpie on just a piece of plastic PVC. So if I go from the side, put it in the, toward the middle of the crown where some of those polyps are. So if you see, if I go from the middle, definitely some four inch polyps in there. And if I go from the back and start right at the, where the crown begins, you can see that those polyps are extended to about four inches. Some even a little beyond. Now this is by no <laughs> stretch of the imagination, any kind of like scientific measurement. You get the point, I mean, three and a half to four inches long for most of these polyps, I would say that that is definitely a check. It's definitely pinkish brown in color, so that gets a check. And I would say the polyps are definitely toadstool size. So for reference, here's my green toadstool that I have. And then here's the Weeping Willow leather. Jake says that sometimes they can be almost pulsing Xenia size, the polyps on some of these leathers, but this is definitely one of the smaller ones. So we'll go ahead and check that one off. All right, so let's go ahead and kill all of the flow in the tank. All right, so flow is turned off in the tank right now. This is the part that I've never seen or witnessed before, is the polyps actually folding over the crown of the toadstool, and I just, it just never happens. I mean, they, can, they fall a little bit, but nothing as dramatic as the photo that Jake Adams took that won the calendar contest. So as you can see, they're just kind of suspended there in the water. I mean, four out of five isn't bad. And at the end of the day, I got a really cool showpiece in my tank and it moves and it flows and I think it gives the tank just a whole nother level of life, really. And it is most certainly closer than any other Weeping Willow leather or Weeping Willow toadstool that I've seen advertised online on any kind of online coral marketplace. So maybe I can't call this a Jake Adams Weeping Willow leather, but you know what? It's pretty special to me still, and I really, really like it. And it seems like the clownfish like it too. So until next time, let me know what your favorite underrated coral is. What's a coral that doesn't necessarily have a lot of color that you really, really enjoy? Leave that in the comment section below. Hit the like button, hit the little bell notification and the subscribe button so you know when there's new videos that are coming. And uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.